I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like. Get it. Yo. Yo. Peep the vision. Remember when rappers was really spitting? Now I listen in to see the passion for the crap is missing. A lack of purpose in the paragraphs written. You copycats, but swear to God, you different. I get it. You had a little spark in the beginning, but now your heart suffers because your heart ain't really in it. It's all a cloud chase for the part that you play in the major chasing papers. Praying God is at the end of but you ain't winning. <laughs> You're looking silly, a derivative of Drizzy. Like that's going to get you millions. Meanwhile, I made these crackers making biggins off of niggas like you capping like you killers, but you ain't touching nothing. Everybody knows that you be fronting. You the type to freeze when it's time to squeeze the button. Get off the stage with all that make believe stunting. Cause everybody knows that you bluffing, they gon' do nothing. I niggas that way too cute. I blaze the booth. Underground Kang hit her. Name the truth. Hop on the stage and slay you uh, boots. More I sell the hardest color in my name is proof. Man, y'all niggas acting way too cute. I blaze the booth. Underground. So I'm from a different era. The truth. Hop on it wasn't no cell phones when I started rapping, you feel me? Look, 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 don't give a fuck about your views or your followers on TikTok. Cause nigga, this is hip-hop. You ain't a rapper, you's a content creator. NPC streaming cause your bars is weak. I mix it. What I like, what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like. Yeah, what's up, world? Welcome to I Mix What I Like. I'm Jared Ball, happy to be your host. We're Marcel P. Black. Uh, the approach, at least, of Marcel P. Black is, is deeply appreciated. Shout out to him. And uh, we may hear more from uh, him later on in, in, in the show. Uh, welcome everybody who's coming in live. Peace and welcome to those who will see and hear this later. Peace and welcome to you as well. Please do like, share, subscribe uh, to this channel and uh, put this in your socials as we get into a discussion that Marcel put me on to uh, of the big cigar. Long time in production. Pause, pause, pause. Long time in production uh, and a fascinating story and uh, uh, I think something worthy of a, of, a, of a Vernon philosophy of black media avoidance warning. Uh, the link to the Vernon philosophy and, and uh, the background and explanation of it is in the show description. And uh, I caught up with the man himself yesterday. We're going to link up next week and catch up. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see if, if the actual Vernon makes it over here. Maybe maybe the actual Vernon might pop up around these parts. But uh, uh, so shout out to him as, as well. Uh, Okay, so so let's get into this. So we're talking about. So actually, first, let me do that. Let me do that. Just a quick reiteration of what the Vernon philosophy is. Uh, and uh, again, whoops, the link is in the show description for uh, where you can follow up on your own. There's been many discussions of it in in. iterations now all of a sudden what's going on here hold on one second while i fix that but it's essentially a shout out to to uh a conversation i had with uh my buddy vernon some years ago and uh hmm, that's odd Yeah, that's very odd. Uh, and when when thirty plus years ago, like I think at this point, we were uh, working together at a at a pizza spot, uh, and uh, we're we're out uh, 
just, I guess, during a break or whatever, having a conversation. And he says, I don't want to see any more films featuring our people, black people. And uh, I said, uh, at the time, I was shocked by that and said, that can't be right. And why would you want, you know, why would you, so this video be the, 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 the updated version of it, but why would you say that? And uh, as I says here, initially I thought this absurd or at least an overcorrective response to a clear, longstanding and well-documented problem of black media portrayal. I only needed a few decades in the accumulation of massive student loan debt to realize how correct Vernon was or is. So, uh, and there's more here in terms of uh, links and and previous discussions of of the subject, uh, and even the original version of it. Uh, discussed with Eugene per year and uh, the voice himself on a classic by any means necessary. Uh, but uh, the short of it is it's not an actual boycott, more of a kind of intellectual one of sorts that, that could be, a, you know, that encourages us not to look to see ourselves, that no oppressed group in the context of the media environment we're in should look to find themselves or see themselves or to look to see their stories reflected back because in the context of counterinsurgency and psychological warfare, colonialism and so on, capitalism and so on, white supremacy, patriarchy, all of, the, all of the things, in the context of all of that, media are weaponized. And when they target a particular oppressed community, it may look good or even feel good or 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 be produced well and acted well, but the politics of it are meant to undermine any radical approach to those conditions. And yes, Yipper, uh, I am going to see the magical society of magical Negroes or whatever it is. I am gonna end up seeing that probably next week. So just another reason to get M. Tume back on here. Uh, so what I'm, what I'm, so today what I'm attempting is again, just sort of what I did uh, with the Marley film and all this, just a, a warning. And when the film and the series that I'm talking about today comes out, we'll, we'll definitely talk more about it. But uh, because there's going to be much more to say than than what I've said here. I've even reached out to to Daruba to see about scheduling him to come back uh, if he's well enough. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, in the in the in the immediate to to talk about it, uh, just as an, again an excuse to talk to him to me to to Daruba to whomever. But uh, it reminds me, or I'm reminded of. Uh, the 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 serendipitous encounter I had a couple of years ago. Uh, shout out to Baruch Gottlieb who set it all up uh, in 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 a, in in this tribute to to the Black Panther Party and Emory Douglas. Uh, I got to be in Amsterdam and meet and have this brief conversation at the hotel with Kathleen Cleaver. And as I like to recount, you know she. I said, you know, not remembering, I just, for some reason, just in, in maybe the excitement or the, 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 I don't know, just the, my bad memory, just, just not thinking. I just forget some of the history I've, and in the moment, I've certainly forgot some of the history. And I remember I said something made a positive reference to Huey Newton and she made a little quip and then just sort of looked at me and said, what I will always remember her saying was, she said, well, you believed the mythology. And this is true in many, in, in many cases that I, I do tend to focus more on the ideas of a particular person or, or organization than the actual behavior uh, or, or alleged behavior. I, I admit that, that, that uh, this could be a, a, certainly be considered a flaw, but I'm more interested in the ideas 
So when criticism of Huey, particularly towards the end of his life, uh, which is, there's a lot and a lot of wild, wild stuff has been said about him with a lot of people. So I, 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 what I'm saying is I don't know, but there's a lot of people been saying a lot of, you know, and, and written a lot. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today, uh, about Huey and, uh, is 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 some of it is difficult to deal with but what i am what i admittedly am happy to remain focused on is that when people like huey and the panthers are popularly depicted it is often done not in a way to give some sort of honest balance this that and the third uh or exploration into the to the the experience or the 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 context or whatever it's it's to present the story or the history in a way again that supports the politics of those in charge at the moment and what version they want to tell and what is clearly evolving in what has been said about over the last decade really because this this series or film has been talked about for a long time and it's it's seemingly being done again to center white men and a white man in particular and to center the more salacious aspects of Huey's life as opposed to the politics, the political struggle, or any of that. And again, it's looking to be beautifully done well presented, well acted, and that much more damaging politically. Uh, so this is not to say that Huey's foibles and flaws shouldn't be explored or criticized or understood or known. My point would be that that's not the intent of these media product. The, the intent is to overemphasize the salacious and the negative and to undermine and underplay entirely the politics uh or any of the ideas so just as we move a little bit forward here i want to as they rebuild the this this great website that i used to use all the time just to show the interlocking board of directorates of of dominant companies we can start with that that this series is going to air on apple in connection with warner brothers uh, and what I love about, and again, theyrule.net, it just allows you to get an idea of and to, uh, to graphically represent these interlocks and to give a better idea, I think, of what of the kind of product that we're ending up dealing with. So just to start with Apple, uh, multinational company headquartered in Cupertino, founded in 1976, uh, CEO Tim Cook, 150,000 employees. What is this? 383,000 million million. So what is that? 3 billion or 300 billion more likely? uh in in revenue these are the board <laughs> al gore owners include the vanguard group which is everywhere as the leading institutional investor berkshire hathaway which is warren buffett uh, and i believe his partner his munger just passed away recently blackrock uh um uh, Flint, right? I'm, now I'm getting confused with the hustler. <laughs> uh, owner of Black Rock, uh, Larry Fink, not Flint. <laughs> Although they're both hustlers. Uh, or maybe I don't mean to demean Larry Flint by misremembering. Mis him uh, with Larry Fink. So 
oh, these are the search engines, I think, that they were used to get their, some of their information, I guess. I'm not sure what that is. Or search suggestions. Okay, sorry. So, uh, okay, so just that's that. So then when you look at the, the, oh, the interlocks, it's, it gets, of course, fascinating. So Alex Gorski is on the board of Johnson & Johnson, IBM. I mean, and again, it, you could go on and on uh, to just to, to, to see all, I don't even know what these companies are per se. Uh, and you can move the, the, the figures around a little bit. It's a little bit unwieldy, but of course, JP Morgan is there. Uh, who else, who else is on a, a board of something else? Nike, Target, Bank of America. And again, just if, if anyone is unclear, boards of directors, it doesn't mean that they have all power, but they, they're, they're, they exist to give corporations legitimacy, to give corporations, um, partnership relation, uh, partnerships. Uh, to make sure that everybody's more or less on the same page and not working against one another too much. Cigna Insurance. Uh, to influence, obviously, the, the management. Advise, invest, so on and so on. So uh, they're not unimportant. And again, we could go on and on, but it's just to give an idea. Uh, I love this search engine, even if it is... Let me see if I do it that way. Okay, yeah, there we go. And you can, and, you know, so you can get an idea of why the programming would look the way it looks uh, and what the political intent would be and what kinds of messages uh, an Apple platform would want to support and distribute. Okay, it's not perfect evidence it's not but it's i think oh it's just always a nice exercise to remember and if and to follow up with that there's always a you can always look at the business roundtable which is again the overt expression of how the ruling elite working through corporations work together to influence public policy primarily and manipulate popular opinion so before we even get to the product itself, I think that's always a good, and this is again why the Vernon philosophy exists, because it's, it's out of sort of this confluence of, of, of bad actors, pun intended, that we get this product. All right. So... The sort of immediate headline that I think I got from Marcel comes from Deadline just from a few days ago, a week ago. The Big Cigar, premiere date and first look at Andre Holland as Black Panther leader Huey P. Newton in Apple Limited Series. So again, we get the iconic picture. But the story is 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 wild. And it's not that it's, and again, I mean, it, it, it makes sense that that a, a film would be made about this. Uh, it just, it also makes sense that it would be the focus because it it's, it's clearly going to, I think, allow for them to avoid all of the real politics of the day. So... Uh, the six-episode limited drama series is set to premiere globally on May 17th uh, and wrap uh, about a month later based on the eponymous Playboy magazine article by Joshua Berman, which I looked for but couldn't find without having to pay for and maybe I'd, I'd sign up through Playboy or something like that. Uh the series which chronicles Newton's escape to Cuba is executive produced by Janine Sherman Barrios, who is the producer of Claws and the Kings of Napa and who just inked a deal with Apple. I think to she's gotten another one of those, um, you know, production contracts or arrangements where she's going to be sort of the one of the the 
leading producers of black targeting content, or I should say, what I really should say is white affluent targeting content that features stories nominally about black people. Uh, and uh, it's going to be director, directed and executive produced by Don Cheadle. So a lot of star power. But as they say here, per the, per the official synopsis, The Big Cigar is the incredible true story of Hollywood revolution of Hollywood revolution meeting social revolution. It's a wild caper of Black Panther founder Huey Newton escaping from FBI to Cuba with the assistance of famed producer Burt Schneider in an impossibly elaborate plan involving a fake movie production that goes wrong every way it possibly can. And somehow it's all true, mostly. So uh, as I think this article and several others make make the point this is it's similar to the film Argo in this sense in terms of the story it's featuring uh and, and but while they praised Argo in fact one of the articles is it this one where are my notes here no it's not this one but they they another article praises Ar, uh, Ar, Argo as a noble film uh whereas this story because in that one, if folks remember, it's 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 Ben Affleck whitening the Latino original person, real person, who led, uh, I think, American and Canadian diplomats out of Iran, right? Using the the pretense of a, of a of a phony movie, and while that was considered noble what is done what is described in this film is an ignoble act that is that is is overall the overall point being that Burt Schneider this rich white movie producer uh got caught up in the hype of Newton drugs uh fake revolution and became a sponsor and as we'll talk about it later allegedly a lover of Huey Newton and uh, funded Newton's l later life uh, up to his death, including his funeral, and at this point helped him escape charges, uh, including murder, uh, uh, to flee to Cuba. Uh, and then it describes Newton almost exclusively, these articles exclusively in the context of uh, drugs, hype, phony, pretense, thuggery, violence, and uh, uh, with his sort of white lover slash sponsor slash benefactor slash whatever. So you can, it, it becomes clear why this would be the story that they would want to tell uh, that would include Huey Newton and why uh, I'm not entirely clear why it took so long, uh, but it's it's just it to me it's it's it, it, again I'll just pull up another story here. It just looks very much like we're not going to be able to we're not going to get much uh, about Huey's actual politics we're going to get a lot more about his later in life alleged uh behavior so this story was published in uh, again in, tw in in 2012 so it was just showing a little bit of how long this this the idea of this this film or this series has been discussed and it's written by Kate Coleman who uh has not much good to say about Huey and uh also wrote a scathing 19, which I did find, a scathing 1978 New Times, not New York Times, which threw me off initially in my search for it, story called The Party's Over, which, as she mentions in this story, she was encouraged not to publish because it is just a scathing critique of, of Huey Newton and... Uh, well, let's talk about it. So here, this is this is what she wrote in 2012 about the Schneider and Newton 
uh, duo. More than three decades ago, as I was winding up a major investigation of the Black Panther Party and its leader, Huey Newton, I received a call from Abby Hoffman, the ant antic anti-Vietnam War activist, then a fugitive from criminal charges for selling cocaine to a narc. Abby and I had been friends and fellow street fighting buddies on the Lower East Side in numerous demonstrations of anti-war yippies. His... Oh, man, the ads, the ads. His purpose, he said, was to talk me out of publishing that 1978 investigation in New Times. It would hurt the left and the struggle for black justice, he warned. My story exposed Newton's bizarre leadership for a time he carried a swagger stick a la Idi Amin, which I thought, again, you know. Far worse was the extortion racket he presided over that shook down pimps, drug dealers, after hours clubs, and even a theater owner. Noncompliance left one club owner dead and undiscovered for days in the trunk of his car, which was parked at the San Francisco airport. So then she goes on to talk about a little bit about where this film ends up going. A, a, a lot of this article ends up being more about Burt Schneider, uh, but um, but she, as, as she writes here, yeah, he admitted talking about Abby Hoffman. Uh, Burt Schneider, I already knew, had un underwritten Abby's fugitive existence just as he had for Huey Newton. I turned Abby and Burt down. The Panther investigation would run, and it it it. It was scathing and hard to, it's, it's difficult to read. It, it has uh, uh, graphic details of an alleged R word or, or maybe, maybe, maybe just shy of that, some sort of uh, uh, abusive SA of a woman that, that is grabbed at gunpoint off a street. I mean, here we come, I mean, it's, it's, it's very difficult to read. Uh, I will admit that. Uh, but Bert Schneider, who who died uh, last December, so that would have been tw in 2012 or 2011, uh, at 78, was an innovative producer and Oscar winner for the anti-Vietnam War air, war documentary Hearts and Minds, as well as some of the generation's best and most iconic movies, Easy Rider, Five Easy Pieces, The Last Picture Show. I, I, see, I, I know I saw those two. So Schneider was a big time movie guy for a minute and he was uh enamored by the anti-war left uh and so uh, just uh, giving some background to the to the character that's going to be uh what's described as we'll get to in a little bit the co-star with uh the brother paint playing huey so this is going to be very much sort of a, a white black buddy buddy film it, at the 1975 Academy Awards, accepting the Oscar for Hearts and Minds, a film critical of the government's war in Vietnam, Schneider angered old guard Hollywood by reading a telegram from Ambassador Din Ba Thi of the provisional revolutionary government, the Viet Cong, thanking the American anti-war movement for all they have done on behalf of peace. Frank Sinatra countered by reading a Schneider scolding letter from Bob Hope. <laughs> That's actually funny. But imagine that, though. I mean, getting a letter from someone you're actually, your country is actually at war with, saying thank you for your efforts on their behalf. Uh, and there you go. There's, there's Frank Sinatra and Bob Hope reminding everybody where they were politically. And, you know. But after he met Newton, introduced by Elaine Brown, her book claims, the Panther Minister of Information and Group's real leader, Schneider made a giant leap financially and emotionally into Newton's world and psyche. Huey, as his white friends and those outside the party called him, was a genuine revolutionary hero to many. He was a militant who'd actually shot an Oakland cop who was seen by, a left, by the left as a racist pig. He came across in small groups as attractively modest, playful, and smart. She goes on to basically say he was fronting that to the thugs, he would act like a thug to the erudite and, and white left supporters. He would act like an innocent intellectual and that he apparently was very good at, 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 at performing both and uh, confusing everybody. Uh, but Coleman continues here about Schneider, because I'm just interested in this more about 
I'm, about some of the backstory and the back the relationship and the approach that Snyder brought and that that I think the white affluent targeted audience will be bringing to not only the production but but the expectations in terms of the content of this this product uh so I'm just interested in in I was I was fascinated to to see uh to to learn a little bit more or to learn anything about because I don't know anything about Schneider uh or this story uh I don't remember ever reading about this story I don't remember it being ever discussed uh and but I am interested so I'm fascinated that this is the story being used to reintroduce and more likely introduce most of the audience that it's going to reach to who they think Huey Newton was and what black radicalism is. But the money he gave Huey Newton, that is Schneider, to his defense attorneys and to Panther programs, along with living expenses for Newton alone from the early 1970s until Newton's death in 1989 cost Schneider millions. And she goes in to describe that he paid for the penthouse that Huey Newton lived in while the rank and file lived in crowded sort of dormitory style, uh, uh, quote unquote residences, uh, you know, rat infested. I mean, like she, she paints a picture of Huey very living a very distinct life from, from those who were both doing the actual work of the party, those who were escaping the party through threats of his violence um and uh, uh and his descent into madness and drug addiction uh and again i think it 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 stands to reason why this is so schneider was that is uh he was deeply involved in risk arrest by plotting and financing newton's escape to cuba to avoid criminal charges for a string of crimes he allegedly committed in the summer of 1974 Newton was accused of shooting a 17-year-old prostitute on an Oakland street. She later died of her wounds. He also pistol-whipped the elderly tailor in his penthouse apartment overlooking Lake Merritt while being fitted for a suit, and he pulled guns on a couple of undercover vice cops in an Oakland after-hours bar. As I doc documented in New Times, facing all those charges, Newton ran... Face in, as I documented in New Times, facing all those charges, Newton ran. He jumped bail and was literally and was initially harbored by the Zen Center, as Zen denizens at the time confirmed. Several people knowledgeable about those times asserted that Newton actually stayed at Snyder's house briefly before being spirited down to Mexico to await passage to Cuba. So they throw this in there too that while that that while Newton was on the run, allegedly uh, that he was not a good worker while working in a factory in Cuba, he he didn't like that apparently, and that someone who was staying with him in Mexico said that he was likely guilty of everything he was accused of, if not more. There's no evidence. It's just thrown. It's just it's just in there. So again, I'm not saying he didn't do it. I'm more interested in in the approach and the framing uh, that is likely that I'm suggesting is going to uh, appear in the film. And I wouldn't be surprised if in this series we don't get flashback scenes of Newton, because I haven't even gotten to some of what the more salacious stuff that that are in these articles that we're going to look at, uh, but. It's just a lot of drugs and violence and sex. So there's there's going to be little room, if any, for any actual discussion <laughs> of politics. Uh, Elaine Brown, the beautiful panther who drove around in a red Mercedes while lower-ranked panther women cleaned her apartment, met Schneider years earlier when she was in the Los Angeles chapter. This is where they talk about Schneider giving Newton the check for 12000 for the posh, secure 25th floor penthouse. Newton hated doing labor in a Cuban factory, apparently. So he's just described as just fake. He's not a real worker, not a real revolutionary, more of a thug. Schneider and he are engaged in political fantasies. Uh, Newton, gave, Newton gave Robin a front row seat to, at the rev revolution. Robin was the name that... So, okay, so... Schneider had a relationship with the, the actress Candace Bergen, who in her book just writes of him uh, pseudonymously, I guess, as Robin. Did I, did I get the right word there? 
Uh, and so, so in her memoir, she describes Schneider getting from Huey a front row seat to the revolution and a means to live out political fantasies. Then there's a whole bunch of discussion again of LSD, cocaine, hanging out with celebrities, uh, say, talking about Newton banning monogamy in the Panther Party, declaring it a form of capitalism for the notion of ownership of a lover or spouse that must be smashed. Uh, and again, even if there were lofty goals or ideals associated with that, they're presented here as in a disparaging way. So I don't know to the extent, I don't I actually remember that point, but to the extent that there were any actual legitimately progressive ideals in that they're not presented here. Uh, what Coleman says is what's both sad and bizarre about the producer and the Panther is that both men were spiraling down with drugs. Freebasing cocaine was their shared drug of choice. Now this is something I did not know. And I don't remember ever hearing this. They were sometimes joined by Richard Pryor, especially in the 1980s when Newton seemed to have abandoned the Panthers and was flying down for stints of screenwriting at Schneider's very comfortable home. Imagine Snyder and Newton heads together until late hours collaborating on a screenplay on Newton's life with Pryor slated for the starring role. When Pryor set his face and scalp on fire while freebasing, the dream of a Newton film collapsed. Now, I actually don't remember that ever being discussed. That, that obviously I remember vividly as a, as a kid when Richard Pryor lit himself on fire. I remember all the discussion. I remember live on Sunset Strip where he came and talked about it, but I do not remember it ever being discussed in, in association with Schneider, Huey Newton, or Pryor possibly playing Newton in a film. Now, I can definitely imagine how nights filled with cocaine, smoking, snorting, et cetera, cocaine, I absolutely could understand how <laughs> those kinds of evenings would result in discussions of that kind of film, but I just don't remember hearing that. So I'll check the chat. If you all want to enlighten me, I'll, I'll check that in a little bit. The bond between them was enormous and ultimately romantic and sexual as well as fraternal and comradely. This was demonstrated finally by a small cache of handwritten letters never publicly revealed before that Newton sent his patron from prison as well as after his release from the Alameda County Jail on an old illegal possession of a gun conviction several years before he was murdered in 1989. In one letter, Newton glowingly expresses his joy and sensual excitement after spending his first night following his release from prison with Schneider. The producer had bailed him out, driven him in a white stretch limo by the prison so he could wave to his fellow prisoners, then taken him off to spend the night together on top of the Hyatt. He then explains why he went with Snyder and not his wife, Frederica, Freddie. I chose to spend the night, the first night out of jail with you rather than Freddie, because as you stated to someone, the two of us were married first. So satisfied, he adds with an almost audible laugh or audible sigh, rather. And despite his avowals calling Snyder my love or swearing to love him always, Newton's letters are also full of reproach, mentioning promises of financial aid to his wife, Frederica, or loans due with much detail. You said that you would take care of my family. Instead, you took my family, Newton wrote. So, um, I, again... I'm less interested in in those claims than I am that they are so much of the focus in the approach of at least some of the early and still ongoing reporting about this this film and now series. So, but uh let's pick back up with a few more pieces here back to deadline uh still in 2012 the story by mike fleming argo journalist shops another fake film saga how burt schneider got black panther huey newton an easy ride to cuba so again these articles going back to 2012 when apparently this was was all of this was 
picking up steam. All of it is focused on bringing in the Hollywood story, centering the white male character, centering the salaciousness, not the politics, not the context. And were this one of dozens of well-made films and documentaries and series about Huey Newton's and the Huey Newton and the Black Panther Party, maybe fine. This is a fascinating, admittedly fascinating story. But in the context of all that had gone on, all that Huey did, it's a, it, 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 the story actually pales in comparison to all the other stories. I mean, imagine telling a story from that centers that initial shootout that got him locked up in the Free Huey campaign. I don't know. The point is, my point at least, that it's just a safe way to present and rebrand the history for today's and you know potential analysts and maybe future strugglers. Uh, but it's not meant to inspire any kind of radicalism. But okay. Uh, again, it's based on this this Playboy article I could not find. Uh, Schneider's death that had taken place or occurred not long before this this 2012 set of articles came out. Uh, according to the article, Schneider hatched the cigar, a movie built. This is the the Playboy article that that uh, started all this. The big cigar, obviously a reference to Castro, who I'm sure we'll never see and we'll never get any of of the Cuban Revolution's politics either. But according to the article, Schneider hatched Schneider hatched the cigar, a movie built around Newton that producer that the producer never intended to make. It did help the radical leader leave the country to, and flee to Cuba, where he stayed for three years before returning to face charges. This is much different than the noble story behind Argo, because the violence in Newton's alleged crimes are unsavory and continued until his eventual, he was eventually shot to death at age 47. So the violence of the Canadian state and the U.S. military and intelligence agencies in Iran and elsewhere in the Middle East, that's, that's, that's all noble. <laughs> But it, the, the, the alleged crimes of Newton are unsavory, but still worthy of, of being the centerpiece, because that's all I said in that one, still worthy of being the centerpiece of, 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 of a series about him. So let's look back to Deadline for... Um, the latest in the big cigar. This this was again from just a, a week or so ago, or at least this story, the one we just. Oh wait a minute, no, we didn't go. So we'll just start here then. I didn't get to this one. So this, oh yeah, I did, I did, I did, I did, I did. Right, 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 right. Oh no, okay, okay. Did I? Right. Per the official synopsis, The Big Cigar, The Incredible True Story of Hollywood Revolution Meeting Social Revolution. Right. All right. Then if we go down one more, there's a whole bunch of, of this is sort of tracing all of their coverage of it, uh, showing you some of the people who are, are coming on board as as to play in the series. So all of these folks signed on. You got Glenn Turman coming back to play the Huey's father. Ali Hoskvi is is from Oppenheimer, is is joining in a recurring role. Obi Wan Kenobi's Moses Ingram joins the limited series in a recurring role. Jordan Christie, Ozark actor. Now, Alessandro Nivola, who recently was in The Sopranos sort of reboot or whatever it was, is 
being brought on to play Schneider. So he is going to be a, a, a centerpiece of, if not the star of the series, the almost too good to be true story of how Newton relied on his best friend, Bert Schneider. So this is going to be like Schneider and Newton, <laughs> buddies, cocaine and cocaine and canoes to Cuba, cocaine, canoes and Cuba. The series hails from Warner Brothers Television, where Sherman Bar Barois and her folding chair productions are under an overall deal. Vox Movie St Studios. This marks the latest collaboration for Apple TV and Warner Brothers. These are the folks that brought us Ted Lasso and Shrinking. I actually liked Shrinking. But the point is, as I read this, to me, it reminded me of what Daruba, Amiri Baraka, Alombe Brath, and John Henry Clark pointed out just in advance of Spike Lee's Malcolm X coming out, where they made the point of that Warner Brothers wanted to brand Malcolm X as they had done Batman and The Simpsons. So here we're getting, as I'm reading this, we're getting Huey Newton branded as they did Ted Lasso and Shrinking, a comedy about shrinks. So again, as, 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 as I talk about this in the context of a warning, of a Vernon philosophy warning, this is why we can't, we, we should not want to see ourselves in these products. All right, there's one more. Uh, I think this was the last one that I had. This was a story in The Guardian from a few years ago, how Hollywood fed into the black power movement and fell foul of the FBI. And I'm really only interested, let's see, uh, in this, because in this story, it's 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 about Gene Seberg, uh, and and her story, which probably I didn't see, but probably did similar. Let's see where. Oh, right, because I couldn't highlight it because The Guardian has this. OK, here it is. So Huey Newton. Huey P. Newton was rowing towards the Cuban coastline in a dinghy with only one oar when it capsized. The leader of the Black Panthers and his girlfriend, Gwen Fontaine, were on the final part of a journey that had been masterminded by the most important production team in the new Hollywood era, Burt Schneider, Bob Reffelson, and Steve Blauner, a.k.a. BBS Productions. Five years earlier, the trio had ended up had upended the movie industry with Easy Rider. Now they were attempting to do to to do to American life what they had done to Hollywood: brazenly tear up the rule book and redistribute power. That's a hell of a of a of an introductory set of images that we get in all of this. Uh, and you could see why it would be uh, of interest to those looking to tell stories of black revolution to white affluent audiences. The producers clandestinely shuttled Newton to Mexico, then convinced a Colombian smuggler known as known only as the pirate to take the black radical who was on the run after being accused of shooting a 17-year-old sex worker into Cuban waters. I'm sorry. I didn't read that with the right emphasis. The producers had clandestinely shuttled Newton to Mexico, then convinced a Colombian smuggler known only as the pirate to take the black radical who was on the run after being accused of shooting a 17-year-old sex worker into Cuban waters. 
But Newton and Fontaine struggled in the choppy sea, eventually scrambling ashore where they were picked up by the Cuban authorities. Drenched, drenched and anonymous to their would-be saviors, it wasn't the hero's welcome the Black, Panther leaders, the Black Panther's leader anticipated, but it might have been BBS's most audacious production. And that to me speaks, that to me perfectly, in many ways, summarizes the context and the approach that I think we're going to see in this series, that it's going to be told in, uh, in, in, it's going to be an exciting story that's going to be filled with all the salaciousness and the, all the centering of white maleness and buddy humor romantic comedy perhaps so it's interesting the articles that i that i went through at least one of them made reference to the alleged love affair between Newton and Schneider but none of them talked of anything about the politics of the party, Newton, or specifically their approach in this instance to same-sex relationships. Which again would be my point. Which again would be my point. So, This is again why coming back to the, to the Vernon philosophy of black media avoidance and what I'll do is is uh which is linked in the show description uh to read more about it or to watch more about it but uh but again the point being we're we're going to be targeted by a media apparatus and an environment that for similar to what, what Barrett Brown was saying to us the other day, that we're going to get stories presented to us from those in charge that are meant to be styled to our particular interests, but are not at all meant to explore the underlying radicalism in those stories or figures. So Huey Newton and the Panthers are too big to omit. The name comes up too often. He was too compelling a figure. There's too many stories like this that can be told. There's too much overlap with white affluence to avoid. There's too much overlap with salaciousness to avoid. So let's let's present it. And then people who are looking for black stories, black sto stories of, of civil and human rights struggles, black radicalism, will have yet another well-produced media product from a black woman executive produced by Don Cheadle that Apple is fully and its array of theyrule.net community are fully happy to have produced that they're they're so happy that they partnered again with Warner Brothers the people who gave us the partnership that gave us Ted Lasso Remember, remember, we talked about it here. Ted Lasso, the the white American male who go football coach, American football coach, who goes to England and miraculously can solve with his brand of American liberal Christianity and Southern affection can solve all the problems of England and world football and, and race and class and gender and sexuality. He just solves everything, parenting, everything. And where the, where the villain is somehow a Ghanaian football team owner. That's the partnership that is accepting of this series we're about to get dropped on us. So let's take a quick break with Mar another Marcel P. Black. Again, shout out to Marcel who dropped this idea on on me, and I'll be right back and I'll check the chat for any comments, questions, queries. Yes, indeed, your boy Marcel P. Black. Back in a minute. From Bad Rules to North Carolina, the toast and back. 
I got my OG saints all commanding. Talk to him, Let OG. me tell you that you never hear me spitting a lie. Croaks hard, wishing the past. Skips the class, handing out parts. Suck a start, wanting everything fast. Millimeter minds, Jackie, your nasty. Frail, delicate spies, walk around with tuck tails, following fad, you duck tails. And Cesar, sure ain't your launch pad. Want my reign, it is so bad, but that's when my back's turn. When I'm around, who is the fonz? Muster up a response, but it's a done deal. Fine, reception you get, code is green bay. Stated was constant, very DNA. But you begin to raise the white flag, locked within criminal fun. Just a desperate attempt, trying to generate your bag, and living like a pathetic sip. But tons pressing on the door. I'm a do rag, so lay down. We ain't stuntin' nothing, you say. Get out the way, on, on the, the real. real. All these fake niggas know the deal. When they start the revolution, all they gonna do is squeal. On the real. All these fake niggas know the deal. When we start the revolution, all they gonna do is squeal. On the real. All these fake niggas know the deal. When they start the revolution, all they gonna do is squeal. On the real. All these fake niggas know the deal. When we start the revolution, all they gonna One do is squeal. Underrated in the underground. Over folk of rappers shook when I come around MCs come correct, standing next to me They know my reputation, heard about my pedigree My spit hits like Ken Griffey, my piss wicked I've been to business, show clothes and give me the mic Bottom of ninth inning, always bet on black Just know they M's when it put your ends on in the city City you win digits, grizzly with the skinny niggas die I transcend limits, 6 4 4 35, you niggas been midgets And I know that I need to lose weight But it's hard to slim down with all these Shout out to Marcel P. Black. When they start the revolution, all they probably do is squeal. Love that drop. All right, good people. Any comments, questions, queries, conundrums, catechisms, cacophony, calumny, consternation, condemnation, contemplation, consternation. Please do like, share, subscribe, put this in your socials, add a comment. I I can no longer use the Pierre drop un, until somebody sends me a clip where he he corrects himself, but he he I saw something that's made me not ever gonna probably be able to watch him again in his discussion with Tasha Kay the other day. Uh do 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 but uh yeah um so yeah forgive any confusion folks but uh i'm i'm over here on sort of my other channel so to speak uh where where um, some of this will end up for sure on BPM, but but this is over here and I mix what I like. I guess part two since the original was became BPM. So it's 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 just a it's just a little extra space to do to do yeah. But uh so forgive any confusion, is there's no so you weren't so if you thought you were on BPM and you were not subscribed, you weren't unsubscribed. So it was if if you were subscribed to the original I mix what I like, it became BPM. This is the other I mix what I like as BPM is now BPM. Forgive all the confusion. It's it's ultimately silly, but just 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 without any issue just just sliding over over here a little bit um and i'm actually going to be doing more in fact i i i nothing's been confirmed i'm trying to do so when this channel gets 
monetizable, which requires, I think, a thousand subscribers and then uh, some other milestones. Um, I'm going to also reopen up my own Patreon, but only for a specific projects or a specific project uh not not just to have another revenue stream um so stay tuned for some of that as well uh and in fact if you want it's in the show description you can sign up for my patreon now it's it's only it's it's three dollars per creation so you're not charged until i create and i won't be creating i think until I have this one project thing set up that I'm trying to work on now. I'm very excited about it, but it's just, it's just too early to, but it's going to require some, it will require sort of crowdfunding. It's not something, uh, but anyway, uh, black daylight, Dr. Ball, you should write a definition of the Vernon philosophy and just add it to the description of all your media analyses videos going forward. So the newbies know what time it is. I think that's a good idea. The, the show description does have a link where I've written it out. Uh, but maybe I could just condense it and put it in the show description of all of these videos. I probably could do a version of that. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Uh, and that's funny. That's funny. I want to, in that Andor summary you sent me was was fire. I like that. That was very helpful and inspirational. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Huey led a wild life for sure. The 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 again the question is what what are we what version of are we going to get? Uh and I don't know if we're ranking based on the 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 tea that is spilled if if what is alleged of Newton is true, he was absolutely worse than MLK and maybe even I don't know about I don't know about Jesse but Maybe in terms of what he actually, if, if if what he is alleged to have done to people in the community is true, he's worse than both of them on that end. Like his, that would have to, I don't know. I would, I, I, I've avoided this stuff on purpose because I want only to deal with the ideas, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little worried about what, maybe that, I think that might be a flaw in my own methodology. But then when do but then do we not talk about intercommunalism? Do we not talk about socialism and and grassroots organization and survival programs pending revolution? And do we not consider any of these do we not consider revolutionary suicide? Because He's alleged to have done some horrific things. I don't know. But I agree, Chitty Macha. We should be, all be worried about the film's impact on the, 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 the nascent. I don't know if I know. Is I don't know. Did you mean nascent? It, 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 nascent, right? Is that what you meant? Either way, I think I get your point, and I agree. And and that's that's really the concern that folks who have never confronted Newton, never read it or studied or any of it, uh, are going to be uh, discouraged. Okay, got you, got you, got you. Thank you. So, but so anyway, again, shout out to Marcel P. Black. Thanks, thanks for for putting me up to on. To, on this baby thank you maybe you know shame on you maybe you know you you, you did me dirty <laughs> put me on to this madness no but we i think it's important that we know what's coming and and um have some sort of analysis of it i'm likely to at least try to watch the series and uh and we'll talk more about it when it comes out and see what else is being said about it but it it, it certainly is is stacking up to be a. uh a monstrous assault on black radicalism. That's that's really the point. And and uh, but I'm also interested. And please do share, comment on this. Uh, 
how we approach those contradictions. I think it's it's definitely for me a struggle. Definitely a struggle. So, but anyway, thanks to those who came out uh, and made it to this to this live, and to those who will see and hear this later. Peace to you as well, as long as you're willing to fight for it, like Fred Hampton used to say. Thanks again, uh, and yeah, do all the things. You know what to do. And we'll catch you here next time here at I Mix What I Like. Thanks again. Peace, everybody. I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like. What I like, what I like, what I like. And what do you sacrifice? Calm. Kindness, kinship. Love. I've given up all chance of inner peace. I made my mind a sunless space. I share my dreams with ghosts. I wake up every day to an equation I wrote 15 years ago for which there's only one conclusion. I'm damned for what I do. My anger, my ego, my unwillingness to yield, my, my eagerness to fight. They set me on a path from which there's no escape. I yearn to be a savior against injustice without contemplating the cost. And by the time I look down, there's no longer any ground beneath my feet. What is my, what is my sacrifice? I'm condemned to use the tools of my enemy to defeat them. I burn my decency for someone else's future. I burn my life to make a sunrise that I know I'll never see. Now the ego that started this fight will never have a, a mirror or an audience or light of gratitude. But what do I sacrifice? Everything! 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 Everything.